All right, guys, we're reading Artemis Fowl. We have made it to Chapter 8. Chapter 8, Troll. Root, lean forward into the microphone. Mulch, what happened? What's your status? Foley was tapping a keyboard furiously. We've lost audio. Motion 2. Mulch, talk to me, dang it. I'm running a scan on his vitals. Whoa. What? What is it? His heart has gone crazy, beating like a rabbit. A rabbit? No, wait, it's... What? breathed the commander, terribly afraid that he'd already knew. Foley leaned back in his chair. It stopped. His heartbeat has stopped. Are you sure? The monitors don't lie. All vitals can be read through the iris cam. Not a peep. He's gone. Root couldn't believe it. Mulch Diggums, one of life's constants, gone. It couldn't be true. He did it too, you know. Foley recovered a copy of the book, no less. He and he confirmed Short was alive. Foley's wide brows creased for an instant. It's just that what, said Root, suspicious, aroused. <clears throat> well, for a moment there, just before the end, his heart rate seemed abnormally fast. Maybe it was a malfunction. The centaur was unconvinced. I doubt it. My bugs don't have bugs. What other explanation could there be? You still have visual, don't you? Yep. Through dead eyes, no doubt about it. Not a spark of electricity in that brain. The camera is running on its own battery. Well, that's it then. No other explanation. Fully nodded. It would seem that way, unless... No, it's too fantastic. This is Mulch Duggams we're talking about here. Nothing is too fantastic. Fully opened his mouth to voice his incredible theory. But before he could speak, the shuttle's bay door slid open. We have him. That's said a triumph voice. Yes, agreed a second. Fowl has made a mistake. Root swiveled on his chair. It was Argon and Kulmas, the so-called behavioral analyst. Oh, we finally decided to earn our retainers, have we? But united by excitement, the professors were not so easily intimidated. Kulmanus even had the termini to wave Root's sarcasm aside. This, more than anything else, made the commander sit up and take notice. Argon brushed past Foley, pressing a laser disc into the console player. Artemis Fowl's face appeared as seen through Root's iris scan. We'll be in touch, said the commander's recorded voice. Don't worry, I'll see myself out. Fowl's face disappeared momentarily as he rose from his chair. Root lifted his gaze in time for the next chilling statement. You do that, but remember this. None of your race has permission to enter here while I'm alive. Argon pressed the pause button triumphantly. There, you see? Root's complexion, complexion lost any final traces of pallor. There. There what? What do I see? Colmus tutted as one would at a slow child. A mistake. In retrospect, the commander had him by the pointy beard in under a second. Now, he said, his voice deceptively calm, pretend we're pushed for time. Here and just explain it to me without any attitude or comment. The human said we couldn't enter while he was alive, speaks Culminus. So, Argon took up the account. So, if we can't go in while he's alive, Root drew a sharp breath, then we go in when he's dead. Culminus and Argon beamed. Exactly, they said, in perfect unison. Root scratched his chin. I don't know. We're on shaky ground here legally. Not at all, argued Culminus. It's elementary grammar. The human specifically stated that entry was forbidden as long as he was alive. That's tantamount to an invitation when he's dead. The commander wasn't convinced. The invitation is implied at best. No, interrupted fully. They're right. It's a strong case. Once Fowl is dead, the door's wide open, he said. He said it himself. Maybe. Maybe nothing, blurted fully. For heaven's sake, Julius, how much more do you need? 
We have a crisis here, in case you hadn't noticed. Root nodded slowly. One, you're right. Two, I'm going to run with it. Three, well done, you two. And four, you ever call me Julius again? Fully, you'll be eating your own hooves. Now get me a line to the council. I need to get approval for that gold. Right away, Commander Root, your warship. Fully grinned, letting his hoot, hoof eating comment slide for Holly's sake. So we send in the gold, muttered Root, thinking aloud. They send out Holly. We blue rinse the place and stroll in to reclaim the ransom. Simple. So simple it's brilliant, enthused Argon. Quite a coup for our profession, wouldn't you say, Dr. Cumulus? Cumulus' head was spinning with possibilities. Lectures, tours, book deals. Why, the movie's rights alone will be worth a fortune. Look, these socialist stuff. This is their collective pipe. Puts the kibosh on the depravation breeds antisocial behavior. Chestnut. This foul creature has never gone hungry in his life. There's more than one kind of hunger, noted Argon. Very true. Hunger is to succeed. Hunger to dominate. Hunger to... Root snap. Get out before I strangle the pair of you. If I ever hear a word of this repeated on an afternoon talk show, I'll know where it came from. The consultants retreated wearily, resolving not to call their agent until they were out of earshot. I don't know if the council will go for this, admitted Root. When they departed, it's a lot of gold. Foley looked up from the console. How much exactly? The commander slid a piece of paper across the console. That much. That's a lot, whistled Foley. A ton. Small, unmarked ingots. 24 carat only. Well, at least it's a nice round weight. Very comforting. I'll be sure to mention that to the council. Have you got that line yet? The centaur grunted, a negative grunt. Very brazen, really grunting at a superior officer. Rutan didn't have the energy to discipline him, but he made a mental note. When this is over, Doc Foley's pay for a few decades. He rubbed his eyes exhaustedly. Time lag was beginning to set in. Even though his brain wouldn't let him sleep because he'd been awake when the time stop was initiated, his body was crying out for rest. He rose from the chair, swinging the door wide to let in some air. Stale. Time stop air. Not even molecules could escape the time field, much less the human body. There were there was activity by the portal. Lots of it. A swarm of troops gathered around a hover cage. Cutchen stood at the head of the procession and the entire bunch was heading this way. Root stepped down to meet them. What's this? he inquired. None too pleasantly. A circus. Cudgeon's face was pale but determined. No, Julius. It's the end of the circus. Root nodded. I see. And these are the clowns? Foley's head poked through the doorway. Pardon me for interrupting your extended circus metaphor, but what the heck is this? Yes, Lieutenant, said Root, nodding at the floating hover cage. What the heck is that? Cudgeon bolstered his courage for a few deep breaths. I've taken a leaf from your book, Julius. And th is that a fact? Yes, it is. You opted to send in a lapse creature, so now I'm going to. Root smiled dangerously. You don't opt to do anything, Lieutenant, not without my say-so. Cudgeon took an unconscious step backwards. I've been to the council, Julius. I have their full backing. The commander turned to Foley. Is that true? Apparently, it just came through on the outside line. This is Cudgeon's party now. He told the council about the ransom demand and you springing Miss Diggums. You know what the elders are like when it comes to parting with gold. Root folded his arms. People told me about you, Cudgeon. They said you'd stab me in the back. I didn't believe them. I was a fool. This is not about you, Julius. It is about the mission. What's inside this cage is our best chance of success. So what's in the cage? No, don't tell me. The only other non-magical creature in the lower element. 
and the first troll we've managed to take alive in over a century. Exactly the perfect creature to flush out our adversary. Roots check, cheeks glowed with the effort of restraining his anger. I don't believe you're even considering this. Face it, Julius, it is the same basic idea as yours. No, it isn't. Mulch Diggums made his own choices. He knew the risk. Diggums is dead. Root scrubbed his eyes again. Yes, I would. S it would seem so. It came in. That just proves I'm right. A troll won't be so easily dispatched. It's a dumb animal, for heaven's sake. How can a troll follow instructions? Cudgeon smiled, newborn confidence peeping through his apprehension. What instructions? We just point it at the house and get out of the way. I guarantee you those humans will be begging us to come in and rescue them. And what about my officer? We'll have the troll back under lock and key long before Captain Short is in any danger. You can guarantee that, can you? And I love you guys.